definition and basic examples of groups. So a group is a set equipped with a, a binary operation that's a, a way of combining elements of G. So it's a function from G cross G to G. Such that, first of all, this operation is associative. Secondly, there exists an identity element for this operation. In other words, there exists an element of G, uh, let's say E, such that for all G in G, E star G is equal to G, and G star E equals G. So notice that we have to require both of these conditions because the operation is not assumed to be commutative. Finally, the third condition is that every element has an inverse. In other words, for any element of the group G, there exists another element H in the group such that G star E is the, this identity element E. And similarly, H star G is equal to E. So an element that satisfies property 2 is called an identity element. And note that at this point, we don't know that the identity element is unique. Similarly, an element that satisfies property 3 is called an inverse of G. And again, we have to wait a little to determine that such inverses are unique. The simplest example of a group is the set of integers together with the operation of addition. <clears throat> so we can easily check through the axioms. Uh, we all know that addition is associative for the integers. This is something we learn in grade school. Obviously the number zero is an identity for addition, and the inverse of a number n is minus n. <clears throat> In a similar way, the rational numbers q and the real numbers r are also groups under addition. Let's look at another very important example, the set of all bijections on a set. So let's let t be any set, and let a of t be the set of bijections from t to t. And let, let's let our operation be composition of functions. We're going to show that this makes a group. And all of the facts we need are just facts that we learn in an elementary course in set theory, which is assumed for this course. So first of all, we have to check the composition of functions is indeed a binary operation. In other words, that if we have two bijections, that that composition is again a bijection on t. Well, of course, if f goes from t to t and g goes from t to t, then f composed with g still goes from t to t. It's definitely a map from t to t. We also need to verify that it's again a bijection, but this is a classic fact from <clears throat> elementary set theory that the composition of two bijections is again a bijection. So, if f and g are in a of t, then so is f composed with g. So this is indeed a binary operation. Now let's check the axioms. Well, again, <clears throat> it's a basic fact from set theory. The composition of functions is associative. So we'll just take that as given. Uh, the identity map as <coughs> a function, the map that sends any element t to t is obviously a bijection, and so it belongs to a of t. And obviously, when we compose the identity with any map, we don't change this map uh, so that i acts as an identity for composition of functions. Finally, we need to show that every element has an inverse. So if we take a bijection, then uh, again, a well-known fact from set theory tells us that if g is a bijection, then it has an inverse for composition of functions. In other words, there exists a map G, G inverse such that G circle G inverse is I and G inverse circle G is equal to I. So the set theoretic inverse is an inverse in the group theoretic sense. So the set of all bijections on a set forms a group. Of particular interest in this class will be the case where t is a finite set with n elements. 
Notice that in this case, a of t has n factorial elements. Another important example comes from linear algebra. Consider the set of invertible n by n matrices. Uh, we claim that this forms a group under multiplication of matrices. And again, just as for the previous example, all the results we needed came from set theory. In this case, all the results we need come from your elementary course in linear algebra. So first of all, we need to check that multiplication is a binary operation. In other words, that the product of two invertible matrices is again invertible. Well, <clears throat> this is a well-known fact. And in fact, we have the formula that the inverse of AB is B inverse times A inverse. So multiplication is indeed a binary operation. Now we move on to the three axioms. First of all, multiplication of matrices is associative, a well-known fact. So in particular, it's associative for invertible matrices. Secondly, if we take the identity matrix, the one with the ones down the main diagonal, then we certainly know that this is invertible. It inverses itself. Um, and when we multiply any matrix by the identity matrix, uh, we just get the matrix back again. IA is equal to A and AI is equal to A for all A, uh, for all matrices A. So in particular, it's true for all invertible matrices. So I is definitely an identity element in the group theoretic sense. Now, if we take an invertible matrix, as we mentioned, uh, then it's certainly, we know it has an inverse and the inverse is again, a linear map. It's another matrix and the, we need to check that this inverse is again in GLNR in fact. So we need to check that the inverse is invertible, but of course the inverse of the inverse is A. So <clears throat> A inverse is an element of GLNR and so A has an inverse in GLNR. So the set of invertible n by n matrices forms a group. Notice that uh, this is the same as the set of matrices with non-zero determinant. This is another way of looking at GLNR. Let's end up by wrapping up by looking at some sets that don't form groups. First of all, the rational numbers under multiplication. Well, this set almost forms a group. The multiplication is associative. It has an identity element, just the number one. The only problem is that the third axiom fails because the zero element does not have a multiplicative inverse. A similar problem occurs with matrices under multiplication. Uh, the operation is associative, there exists an identity element, but the singular matrices do not have multiplicative inverses. Finally, it's important to be aware that some operations are not associative. We have to search fairly hard to get an example of this, or we, certainly we have to take some fairly obscure operations. So let's take the operation defined by on the integers by a star b is equal to a plus 2b. Since associativity is a universal statement, to show that it is not true, we just have to find a single example for which uh, the condition fails. So let's take A to be 1, B equal to 2, and C to be equal to 3. Yeah, and then we just go ahead and do the calculation, 1 star 2 star 3, and we see we get 11. And on the other hand, 1 star 2 star 3 is 1 star 8, which is 1 plus 16, which is 17. So we find that 1 star 2 star 3 is not equal to 1 star 2 star 3. So this operation is not associative. So these are just some elementary examples of groups. Of course, there are many, many other much more important and interesting examples of groups that we will see in the future.